Hey, it's Mike. Welcome back to the channel. So let's carry on with our Jira service management mini series. And today I would like to show you a little bit about SLA because surprisingly SLA is not really that complex uh, subject. Sometimes people are still confused. Yeah, so SLA, I very hope it actually means uh, service, service level agreement. I, I very, very hope I correctly decoded this name. Yeah. Uh, just guess, of course, before we're gonna do it, uh, just to let you know, in the description, you're gonna find a link to uh, my paid and free services. Maybe you require a 30 minutes consultation with six hours, maybe training for you or your team. Uh, we also got a brand new training course about GR, GR, yeah, GR actually service management, uh, as we called A to Z set up based on real life examples. Of course, more information about this you're gonna find in the in the first comment and the description. Right, so let's go back quickly to the video and uh, what is that SLA? There are still some, I think there's like a little bit misconception about this, but generally speaking, yes, it's exclusively um, extension of the extension. It's part of the uh, Jira service, Jira service desks, Jira service management here. Yeah? And you're gonna find like this one, for example, what is breached at the moment, yeah? So clearly you've got a visual representation uh, that the SLA had been breached. And of course, you know, from my experience, it, very often people sometimes are like even afraid of using SLAs or ignore them. You don't have to, you know, because again, if you use them, you use them, but if you don't use them, again, it's up to you. However, from from my experience and my opinions, you should, you should actually use them to just give you some kind of uh, data. Yeah? And of course it is possible later to uh, analyze them because if we go to the report uh, there are some actual reports based on SLA so we've got a success rate of course and we've got SLA breach mid versus breach and of course you, know, you can still create even your own SLA so how to do it this good video is gonna not gonna be uh, too long because <laughs> it's a pretty 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 uh, um, simple subject yeah so what is normally how I start that little, that little, maybe a little bit extra twist if we navigate to the project settings uh, and we na we need to navigate to a SLA section like from in the middle and you know I'm gonna tell you a secret sometimes people think that the default config the out of the box is terrible and I always say it is actually really good and honestly as honestly SLA in my opinion, it's actually great. You know, you probably don't need to do a lot about this. However, yes, the default setup, maybe it is too much, a little bit too much, because you can actually have up to even this, before it was 50, now I think they go in 90, completely crazy. You know, who needs 90 different SLAs? And, and and you can say, yes, because obviously there could be different, different types. So maybe, maybe there will be some people actually who need 90, I don't know, but that's actually, that, that is a little bit crazy. So anyway, um, as I told you, we can actually utilize that existing existing config. However, I always actually start from a calendar setup. And why calendar setup? Because as you can actually see, I have I have in UK time zone, yeah. So it is a good good practice to set them up correctly, and especially especially this is very common question for someone who is using a different offices. Yeah, like for example, let's assume you have a you have an office in London, UK London. You've got maybe in Warsaw, neither one are different, but maybe you've got an office also in Australia or New Zealand or or for example US. Yeah, so there will be actually a few different time zones. This is actually very, very, very important. Why? Because based on the time zone, you can set also SLA. Yeah. So also you have actually your own calendar. That's the reason why I always, you know, adjust that setting. So first, you know, we are only going to cover uh, ver that very simple example. In, in my case, it's going to be one office. And most, most of us probably will be using like this. Who knows? Who knows actually? However, if I'm go, if I'm going to go to the edit, yeah. Uh, so yes, first of all, just adjust your, your, your working hours. And it's actually really important. Why? Because obviously some tickets will be raised uh, very late, even, you know, 4.55. So why not? The, don't forget that that clock is going to be only ticking for five minutes and will restore next day. Yeah, obviously, if it's next day, because if it's Monday, maybe it's Tuesday, maybe it's Friday, it's going to, of course, restore on Monday. However, what is another important um, 
operation is to add holidays is to add bank holidays and of course you know in in, in uk uh, what i'm normally going to the website uh which is for example uk bank holidays i'm just going to input them it, it, it is it, it is important because you know we, we we here in uk i think we've got something like i believe about less than 10 i think it's really like seven probably about six to seven bank holidays a year and most of the time they are not at the same date yeah so like for example yeah christmas day yes it's always 25th today easter, easter monday is not easter monday is this year was actually the first of april but i think next year is going to be different date so please remember adjust this 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 date if you first if you care about this of course next one we can actually go and start exploring SLS. as i told you you know my default setup i'm this is actually let's say a little bit close to the uh, real life example so normally i will probably probably remove one of those you know, because it's time to acknowledge customer feedback again i don't really think i need that and guys this is really important if you do not need something don't afraid to delete it. it's actually pretty easy uh, to delete that or for example time to review uh, normal change if you're using this if you're using this now you can imagine you know why we we need maybe so many slis because maybe that is going to be for change requests not another will be for incident another will be for different issue types and this is actually how it can be configured so if we we go into the time uh, to first response and this is actually where we can start adding them so so first is of course our goal however we're going to call it yeah you can always add, add that new goal and next one is applying issue, applying to issues yeah this is this is guess important because you can have a different time depends on a different category for example incident normally we go two hours maybe in your case it'll be four hours yeah no problem you can always go to edit there you go and you can adjust it and at the moment you know i only use those actually two categories which is incident service requests but if you are using 10 20 maybe more this is actually how you're gonna do it and in that moment you can also apply to the calendar which is responsible for that so you can now imagine why you need other calendars because maybe that incident the incident will be handled in new york yeah but service request maybe going to be handled uh, handled in uh, london for example so this is the reason why you can create of course different uh, different calendars yeah and next one we've got of course the, the, the conditions yeah when the request is pausing and here actually i highly recommend to pause the, the incident when we move the issue into status like waiting for a client this is actually really gets really 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 important yeah so is so so i highly highly of course recommend you to apply it especially if you've got like for example this one time to first response or or time to resolution probably that's that's more important actually in time to resolution i will pause the SLA when we are waiting to respond to the client and very often very often especially for in large um, large department uh, your client gonna raise a ticket saying oh we have a problem <laughs> that's a very common actually or they're gonna be a little bit more specific we have a problem with I have a problem with application yeah but okay but okay there's not enough information so very quickly you can actually respond to a client say okay that's fine but please can you provide a more details and you should as the, as an agent you should move it to additional status which you know in my case will be something like waiting for a client and, and in that moment when we pause that condition yeah the sla is stopping and again you know it can be automatically restored when the issue is commented back from a client here we can actually create automation which for example is going to move the ticket uh, to a status responded or something like this or back to progress depends about the about the condition yeah and of course you know by the by the end of the uh, but the end of basically the SLA configuration when we've got finished counting time and most of the time is for uh, when comment is just for customers and for me most important is the when the resolution is set another reason why you should resolutions yeah so the status doesn't really matter because maybe it's actually set to something like um resolved done completed whatever 
but in, in our case, it actually doesn't care about the status in the workflow, but it cares about resolution. Yeah. So that, that's why this is actually really, really important. And, and, and additionally, the, the default configuration is so good. You can almost copy paste them or leave it. Or if you think, you know, that, that comment from customer is not really important, delete that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to leave it. And of course, our latest, uh, latest information is how to display it on the ticket yeah so it could be for example due date or it could be in that format so to this or this again i don't think it's actually a big difference i like that the default setup which is um with the with the a little bit maybe more user-friendly format and guys this is really it that is really it this is actually how applied so please remember it is mainly about apply to issues yeah that is actually how regulate where to display our um, our sla that's the reason why and i've got to actually go to my default uh, demo demo basically ticket i only got those to, I've got actually four, something like four SLAs. I've only got time to first response and I've got also time to resolution. Guys, that's gonna be it, very simple. I, I do not believe there is anything more complicated with SLAs. Uh, also, please don't forget in the description, you're gonna find more information about our paid and free services. Uh, and if you're unsure, if you need a consultation, maybe on you know, 30 minutes, maybe six hours, maybe training for you or your team regarding JS, JSM setup, maybe, you know, you need some help with, with SLA setup, with the portal uh, forms, or you, you're unsure, you can still book that 20, 30 minutes discovery call uh, with me. All right, that's gonna be it. Of course, here is the playlist with other uh, GS service management um, uh, videos. If you like the video, leave the like. Uh, if you would like to maybe leave a comment, leave a comment. Always, always, always responding to your comments. Now you can start watching my next video.